So the brain actually has some really distinct characteristics that separate it from a computer. The brain is actually a laboratory, and by our design and by our own will, it acts as a laboratory to take concepts, ideas, and models. And in the certain part of the brain, it builds those concepts and ideas. And it says, I'll take a little bit from what I learned here, and a little bit from what I remember here, and a little bit of my experience here, and let me take those specific areas and ask the what-ifs, the possibilities, the potentials, contemplate on designs or ideals that are outside the boxes of what our present understanding is to come up with a new understanding or an enlarged box. So the brain acts as a laboratory. It's an architect. It designs models and it puts the pieces together. And it's... And it's, uh, it's uh, its main function is to come up with a new picture, a new concept. And by repeating it over and over again, there comes a moment when we become so involved in that concept, so involved in that idea, that we lose our attention or our awareness on our external environment, on the signals that are coming from our body to our brain, and on relative time. Because all of our awareness has gone within. It's gone to that concept and idea. The moment that happens, that picture, that model, gets pushed or moves to the frontal lobe. And the frontal lobe is the area of the brain that is the executive. When an idea or a concept makes it to the frontal lobe without our mind wandering to a shopping list and the pain in our back and what time it is and who we have to call, and our relationships. We've put all those aside and we no longer keep re-accessing or re-interacting with parts of the brain that are, are already known within that box, but we're taking those individual concepts and models and ideas and building a bigger concept. And we lose track of our association to people, to places, to things, to times, to events. And we are completely focused on con or concentrated on that idea that's the moment that that idea makes it to the frontal lobe and when, when that concept makes it to the frontal lobe it becomes more real than the external environment we lose track of the external environment and that internal picture now that becomes more real than the external environment is literally where reality is happening because all of our awareness is there at that moment another part of the brain becomes activated. A part of the brain is called the cerebellum. It is uh, the oldest part of the brain. It has millions of connections per neuron as opposed to thousands of connections per neuron in the neocortexes. And that ability for that brain to become activated literally endorses or gives life to that model and causes the brain to become rewired and actually change reality, our perception of reality. Mm -hmm. The best way that, that uh, a human being can become that observer is, first of all, having the awareness or the understanding intellectually that they don't always have to make the same choices over and over again. And secondly, put yourself to be put in certain situations experimentally in your own personal life where you actually override those mechanisms in your body, and that takes practice. It's not something that we can do immediately because there is a tendency biologically for us to respond to preserve the body. The brain has certain centers in it that are only concerned with the preservation of the body. And the moment that we respond, those, those centers kick in and uh, it becomes uh, almost breaking the habit of being human. We have to gain control and override those physiological functions that happen in our body. And the moment that we do that, each time we override those physiological responses, we're changing brain chemistry and actually breaking the addiction to that stimulus and response that uh, so many people live by every day. Is there a physical change that happens in the blank, blank, brain or is it just in some nebulous uh, mind state that this change happens? Well, in order to explain uh, the physiological chemistry in the brain, let's just back up here and give you just a little bit more on anatomy so that, and uh, brain function so that we can address 
uh, the chemical changes that take place in the body. But remember we talked about that tree that has all those branches that connect to other trees and every place that it connects forms a thought or a memory. And that memory becomes wired in the brain. And if we get a series of uh, experiences and information, we call that whole cluster of neurons a neural net. Well, every experience that we have in our life that w the brain builds on, it builds on a law of association. In other words, we learn about an apple by understanding first that it's red, and then we understand that it's round and it's smooth and it tastes a certain way. And uh, uh, it makes a certain noise when you bite into it. And so we develop a neural net that describes ourselves in terms of our interaction with, our, with an apple through our five senses. But if we start uh, in, as a child, started to realize that not, not all apples are red, that they could actually be green, the moment we understand that, that all of a sudden causes the neural net to take more of a shape. And we actually build concepts based on this law of association, what we see, what we smell, what we taste, what we hear, what we feel. And by the second law, which is the law of repetition, which says that if we do something over and over and over again, by the mere fact that we're repeating it, the process of learning whatever we're learning starts to become simple. It starts to become automatic. It starts to become familiar. It starts to become easy. It starts to become natural. It starts to become subconscious. It almost starts to become unconscious. So the law of association and the law of repetition put together causes those nerve cells to literally become uh, hardwired. As we repeat a process, whatever skill we're, we're repeating, the, those connections in the brain start releasing certain chemicals called nerve growth factor. And that nerve growth factor acts almost like a miracle grow to cause a long-term relationship between one neuron and the next neuron. And that's what causes us to go from something that we have to put so much conscious awareness on and so much attention on to learn to all of a sudden to be able to do something automatically and easily. It's because we literally wire it to the extent that holographically or, or dimensionally it starts interacting without our conscious mind, it becomes natural and becomes easy. So we have those same mechanisms uh, structurally in our brain for certain attitudes or certain um, emotions that we live by on a daily basis. All the, uh, the attitudes that we have that we have had experiences with in our lifetime based on how we live. For example, <clears throat> the neocortexes in the brain, which are the, 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 where conscious awareness exists, is where all those connections take place. So everybody that we meet has their own ex series of intellectual experiences and uh, uh, experiences that they've had in their life whether they were raised in a single family, whether they were raised in, uh, with uh, many children, whether they were, uh, went to college, whether they studied art, whether they studied law, 